now you can get the same uncompromising truth you've come to expect from the Final Call newspaper on all your connected devices. Subscribe to the Final Call Digital Edition today. Go to subscribe.finalcalldigital.com. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, we forever thank Allah for his coming to the black man and woman in the hells of North America in the person of Master Farid Muhammad and raising in our midst the Messiah, the Christ, the eternal leader of the nation of Islam, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. We thank them both for the Jesus in our midst, our light-giving son, the Honorable Minister, Louis Farrakhan. I greet all of you in the words of peace. I salam alaikum. Beloved, today is Friday, the 7th of August, 2020. Now, uh, this week's assignment in Study Guide 17 was to go over questions 4, 5, and 6 under the section titled Discussion. However, in preparing these words, I realized that what we really should do first is read and discuss part one of the section entitled Analysis where the minister gives us guidance on what we discussed last week, questions one through three. And so let's read and discuss in our circles tonight part one of the section entitled Analysis. And let me share this with you briefly regarding the well-known verse that the minister lifted in the introduction. Again, in the Holy Quran, Surah 3, which may be verse 53 or verse 54, depending on which edition of the Muhammad Ali translation you have, it reads, and the Jews planned, and Allah planned, and Allah is the best of planners. And so by now, you are a person who is analytical, and you understand the importance of context. And you realize that when the minister lifts a verse for us, he expects us to either have read and studied or to read and study what comes before and after that verse. And it is critical that we recognize what Surah 3, the family of Imran, is all about. It actually centers around women. It is named after a man, Imran, the father of Moses and Aaron, and it sets forth the all-important rule of interpretation that the believer must apply to all religious beliefs. It also narrates the birth of John, the son of Zacharias. And this same surah, at the core of it, is not only the birth of Mary, the mother of Jesus, but the dialogue between Mary's mother, the grandmother of Jesus, and Allah, the grandmother of Jesus, is praying and speaking with the God about the life she is carrying in her womb. And that life is a female child. And we know from our teachings, as Minister Farrakhan has said many times, without a Mary, there can be no Jesus. No man is born except through the womb of a woman. And then in this Surah 3, we read of the birth of one named Messiah, Jesus, and his ministry, his power to heal, to bring the dead to life with Allah's permission. And in the verses immediately preceding the Jews' plan, we see Jesus with his disciples. And Jesus 
is perceiving disbelief among his disciples. Quote, but when Jesus perceived disbelief on their part, he said, who will be my helpers in Allah's way? The disciples said, we are Allah's helpers. We believe in Allah, and we bear you witness that we are the submitting ones. Then the disciples turn to Allah and say, our Lord, we believe in that which you have revealed, and we follow the messenger. So write us down with those who bear witness. Immediately, the very next birth, uh, sorry, very next verse reads, and the Jews plan, and Allah planned, and Allah also planned, and Allah is the best of planners. So what happened between those two verses? Something happened. Something put the plot in motion. Again, this plan doesn't work without a betrayal, without help, without cooperation on some level by a person or persons who are part of the circle of the one who is the target of the plot. The minister, under the guidance of Allah, prepared this study guide, 17 30 years ago for us in this hour that we may not fall victim to history. July 4th, 2020 was the signal to the wise that we are in the time of the departure. And it was the trigger to the enemy that they cannot wait any longer to do to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam what they have been planning to do. Remember what the minister said in the garden to us. The plotters are plotting right now, and they intend to do me and you harm. And at the end of the message, he told the enemy, if in your mind you feel that you are able to harm me and kill me, he might, meaning Allah, he might let me go into your hands for a short while, but don't believe that you will have killed me. But if you make that move, I can guarantee your destruction. So, beloved, we are the witnesses now. He instructed us to stand up, to tell the truth from the mountaintop, And it is our firm stance on truth that will finally break the ties and get us out from under the oppression of the children of the slave master so that we can go into a land of our own that Allah already has for us right here in the continental United States. We must repent from the sin of integration. He did not just call the virus a pestilence from, uh, I'm sorry, he did not call this virus a pestilence in a vacuum, beloved. He called our iniquitous behavior a pestilence on earth. So God answers with a pestilence. The inhabitants of the earth, that includes us. He said none of us came into the garden without sin. And he warned us, don't think that's not talking to me. He asked us, do you live on Mars? So we're all inhabitants of the earth. And so the minister said the punishment from God's pestilence is to turn against you and I all the things we depend upon for our sustenance. See, it's not the virus per se, though the virus is making millions sick and killing people in large numbers. The punishment from the pestilence is to turn against us all the things we depend upon for our sustenance. And that means the white man's world. 
It is time for our separation. May Allah bless us with love and the light of understanding, and let's get into this study and grow into God's. Love you. Assalamu alaikum.